Here it is, July the 4th. Where I am, it's quiet as a mouse. I don't know what's going on, if people are here, if they've gone on vacation, they may even be at the park getting ready for picnics. But it's been kind of cloudy all day. Uh, it just looked like it might rain, but hopefully it won't. So I wasn't invited to any picnics or anything, but that's okay. I'm used to that and I don't mind at all. Um, I have been busy, what you might say, doing nothing. Um, actually, I have been doing something. I've been doing a lot of reading. I started reading some of the things I have written and, and posted on Facebook different times and I uh, came to my story about uh, my car wreck with my red Toyota and the different things that have happened to me, uh, accidents and what have you. And of course, you all know now that uh, I went to the neurologist and he gave me a good bill of health. He was very, very nice, made me feel very good about myself. And so, um, we're going to carry on from there. So I was reading a little something about what Jan had said. I'm, now, you know about my accident, you know about my a head injury, and this is a follow-up. So I'm going to do a little reading. Some people say they don't like when I read things, but there are some things you can't remember it exactly the way you want to, and it's better if you can read it. And for me, I get more detail into this story. So this is, I'm going to try to pick up. We go from day to day, routine basically the same, never dreaming that in a split second, our lives can be turned upside down. What do we do then? Well, I can tell you for certain, it's the Lord and my daughter who keep my feet on solid ground. Now, according to Jan, this cat, referring to me, has defeated fate in six of nine times. Well, you know the old saying, the cat has nine lives. That's what she's talking about. So, after her stories, or my stories, I told about the different accidents I've had and how I came out as well-being, this is what I'm going to follow up with. It's a continuation. It says, after rereading the above story, I realized it was written in February 2023, a year and five months ago. It was time for an update to my historical events. This story is entitled, A Cat With Nine Lives. It was March 9th, 2024. Jan, our friend Nina, and I were attending the Appalachian Storytelling Festival at Cumberland Falls State Park in Whitley County, Kentucky. I was on the list of storytellers for the event. The first day went well. I had already told two stories and was preparing for a second day's performance. But first, we would break for lunch, eating in the lodge's huge dining room in the lower level of the building. We had a beautiful view of the woods and river below. Friends had arrived and were there to hear me tell stories before a live audience. I was anxious to give them their money's worth. Having finished my lunch, I moved from table to table, greeting the attendees. I left one long table, returning through the space between the two tables when my feet got tangled on a chair leg. I grabbed for a chair to balance my stance, but the chair was out of reach. I felt my body going backwards head first, straight to the tile floor. 
There was no way to protect my head as it came in contact with the hard surface. <clears throat> no one was close enough to break my fall. Everyone in the dining room left their seats rushing towards me. I did not lose consciousness, but I thought my head had been burst wide open. I immediately lifted my left hand to the top of my head and what I felt between my fingers was the size of a baseball. Was I going to pass out? Was I going to die? I saw Stephen, the festival leader above me. I grabbed his hand. People had circled around me. I saw a local minister's face above me. My immediate words were, will you please say a prayer for me? I was terrified. The room went quiet. By chance, Jan had left the dining room and was returning when I fell. She did not see me fall. What happened next? I was still on the floor. The decision was made to call for EMTs. They arrived in a matter of minutes. We were 15 miles from medical facilities. I won't repeat what took place next. The EMT seemed clueless of what to do after they lifted me off the floor and turned me loose. Jan refused to let them transport me to the local hospital. She and Nina led me to our car and we headed to the hospital. Nina was a friend that was with us. I was given immediate attention in the ER brain scan showed a brain bleed. I knew the seriousness of this report. I was to be transferred to the University of Kentucky Hospital by ambulance. Jan and Nina hurried back to DuPont Lodge to cancel our reservation and give a report to the festival group. She would drive straight to UK Hospital. It was a rough ride in the ambulance, dusky, dark, rainy, and very uncomfortable, all 87 miles. All I could think about was, what if this ambulance, looks like an old one, wrecks with me strapped down to a gurney, and I can't even move my pinky finger. It was a rough ride. When we arrived, my niece was there waiting for me to arrive. Jan had called and asked her to be at the hospital when I arrived. She didn't want me to be there alone. ER was a busy place that night. What we saw that night made my condition look like having a pimple popped, to put it lightly. A second brain scan, good news. The brain bleed had drained itself out. I don't know if I left something out there or not. At 11.30 p.m., I did. I jumped ahead. At 11.30 p.m., I was dismissed from the UK hospital. I still had a knot on top of my head the size of a baseball. I need lots of assistance in walking. Since we had to take Nana home first, we decided to spend the night at her house where we would be near the hospital in case of an emergency. At this point, Jan decided I would not go home alone. I would be spending a few days at her house way out in the country. We arrived the second day. Jan's husband, Charlie, was there to greet us. Charlie was leading me to the back door and up the steps. Whoops, down I went. This wasn't a good time for a fall. Charlie had hold of one arm, thank goodness. What could we expect next? It was like an episode of the Three Stooges, except we had the attention of two monstrous German shepherds. That wasn't going to be so great because they liked me and wanted to assist me with every step I took. I now had 
four caretakers, none of which would let me do anything without their help. Nights were the worst. I spent three nights sleeping in the guest bedroom. It was nice that there's still no place like your own bed. I thought I could handle the situation alone, but there again, I was dreaming. A footstool was a necessity. Step up, slide your body back in a sitting position on the bed. Then there was the pillow situation. Now, slowly lie sideways with your head falling on the pillow without the knot on the head touching anything. You need a special pillow when you have been gifted with a baseball sized knot on top of your head. Don't touch, it hurts. The head is in position, but the body is turned the wrong way. I can't move. Jan, Jan, get in here. The legs are hanging over the side of the bed. Jan comes through the door and starts laughing. She has to get my legs up on the bed one at a time. Do you know how heavy legs can be? Especially when they won't move on their own. The sad-eyed dogs are standing aside wishing they could help. My legs are on the bed, but they're facing the wrong direction. The baseball size knot is touching the pillow. It hurts. Jan is still laughing. This isn't a laughing matter. We are not Lucy and Ethel. If we were, we'd be raking in big bucks. Okay. If we can swing my body the other direction, I'll be facing the bedroom door. That way, I'll be able to push myself up in case I have to go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. I didn't consider that. Please, Lord, don't let me have to go to the bathroom. If I have to yell at Jan, will she hear me? She's at the other end of the house, but the dogs will. The walking cane is at the foot of the bed. A lot of help it will be. I slept on my right side all night long. Yes, I had to go to the bathroom. It was still dark. Where were the dogs? Will I fall over them? Well, somehow or other, I didn't finish this story. I can just finish it really easily this way. Charlie would get up in the morning. He fixed breakfast. Jan washed the dishes. And the dogs licked my plate clean, made sure everything's in order. And then they sat in the floor in front of me and stared at me. Oh, I don't know what it is about me that is so attractive, but the dogs like me. So there we were, Jan and uh, Charlie. They'd planned a trip three more days. Oh, gosh. Jan knew she couldn't go off and leave me because it was all I could do to walk with the cane. What was she going to do? First thing she did, she called my doctor. Said, I need to bring my mother in. Need to look at her. We're getting ready to go out of town. I can't go off and leave her. So they take me in that afternoon. My doctor's good about that. We go in and he checks me over. No medications were given to me. We go back home and I'm still staggering around through the house like a drunk. Oh, boy, was it like a drunk. I couldn't do anything without having to lean on a table or grab a bedpost or something. 
but I went to the doctor, got that taken care of, I was gonna be all right. So three days, three nights, I stayed at Jan's house and I said, now, okay, you can take your trip. They were just gonna be gone a few days. I'll be fine. So they brought me home and uh, I did. I was doing okay. Uh, it was one of those situations you just have to let time take care of us, what goes on. You have to get well slowly. But Jan was calling, checking on me the whole time. I get back. Well, before she comes back, I made another appointment with the doctor because I had concerns about my injury. And that's when he uh, said he would schedule the MRI, the EEG. Gosh, I can't even remember what else was done. Anyway, I, I saw my doctor two or three times, the neurologist and then the EEG and all of that's taken care of now. Uh, things are going pretty good. I'm even to the point where I forget my cane and I can still walk. But I have to keep my eyes open whatever step I take. And things have been going pretty good. All through this, Jan has been there. She's taking care of me. And she's getting ready to go on another trip. I don't think she'll be gone but a few days, but I don't know if this is the one where uh, Charlie's going alligator hunting. What in heaven's name is he thinking of? I can just see that alligator slithering up behind him while he's aiming his gun the other direction. Well, he's a good shot. I just hope he can shoot backwards. So anyway, I'll see if he's gonna be bringing back alligator meat when he comes back and no way I'm eating that stuff. No way. Well, that was my story, but there was more to it. I forgot to add it in. It was going supposed to be funny, but it wasn't. So you know my history. The knot's gone. I feel fine. And I'm limited with my driving. You know that too. So many things we have to give up and that bothers me a lot. The things I won't be able to do for myself, I'll have to have the help of others. I suppose that's the way it's meant to be and we just have to accept it. Now, I read comment after comment, and I'm behind right now because I've been busy reading other things, but I'm just amazed at how pleased you are with my YouTube channel. I never dreamed it would be like this. I thought I'd tell a few stories and acceptable nothing special but I guess I just didn't realize how closely related we are with our lives how similar we are with our thinking the things we do our food or well, we love talking about food everybody wants a new recipe and they want to share their own. That has been a wondrous thing, the way people can pick up new recipes and follow someone else's guidance. 
I just wanted to say, I don't give an answer to all of the questions. I don't respond to all of the comments. It takes time. And at the moment, if a thought comes to my mind that applies to the person's comment, I answer it. But in many cases, I just indicate that I have read your comment. I want you to know that I read it, I'm interested, and I will respond if it's something that I can respond to. Can't answer all of your questions. I'm not that smart. There's a lot of things I guess at. I just give you my opinion. I think that's what most of us do anyway. We just give our opinion. We have our own likes, we have our own dislikes. And we don't mind talking about them. I re just realized I've been living here at Hanover Towers now 24 years. I was here for the 4th of July that first year. Moved in January 2000. And in July of 2000, I went up on the roof with a lot of the residents who live here. There were a lot of elderly people living here then. And they all came with their drinks and their snacks. And you know how we've been complaining about the weather lately? How hot it is, how unbearable it is. I remember that first July 4th celebration. Jan and her husband, they came over. We went up on the roof. And would you believe we carried blankets with us? It was that cold on July 4th that we were in our lounge chairs covered up with a blanket. And I guess that's why I remember that first July 4th celebration here is because it was cold. The only time I know of that it was cold on the roof and the wind was blowing, but it was my first 4th of July at Hanover Towers. After that, we would have, uh, under, under the car, I call it carport, but the covering in front of the building, take our chairs or tables out, and everybody would bring a dish. We had lots of food. And I remember taking chili with chili buns, but I also took hot dogs because there were a lot of people who didn't know what's a chili bun. Well, it's simple. Chili bun is chili without the hot dog, or you could say a chili dog without the dog. Yeah. That's what it was. And I had a big pot of chili, and it was very good, very good. I remember that as well. It's amazing the things you can go back and remember and the things you have forgotten. Write it down, folks. I picked up one of my little notebooks. What have I done with it? Let's see if I've got it here somewhere. Hold on. I just want to see if I laid it aside. Well, I don't see it. But in my little notebook, I followed my trips to England. 
Oh, here it is. Right in front of me. See this little notebook? Right here. It says, Harrods. Harrods of London. You go in Harrods, you go to the basement. That's where all of the souvenirs are. Anything you wanted. I bought little tin cans, you know, because it showed the city and showed Harrods on the outside of the can, pretty cans. And I wanted the cans as a keepsake. They not only served as a keepsake, but you could store things in them. So I got those. But here, the first trip I took, you can see my handwriting a little bit. The first one, I numbered the pages and the first 99 pages. I'll read the very last page. I arrived back in Lexington at 9.15 p.m. The phone was ringing as I walked in the door of my apartment. It was my son. He was anxious to hear about my trip. End of story. That was August 17th. 2003. No. That's another trip. I've got the wrong trip here. Yeah, let's go back a little. Way back. Gee. I didn't know I had written that much. So, for my descendants, my grandchildren, if they show any interest at all. So far, they haven't. My great-grandchildren aren't old enough yet to appreciate my writings. But maybe someday they will sit down and read what I have written. Let's see. Okay, this says August 14th. This was an eventful day. I participated in the dance lessons. They were teaching samba. You know how to samba? You didn't know I could samba, did you? Well, I can't now, but I could then. I was beginning to get what the nurse called my sea legs. So the movement of the ship didn't bother me. Or else the ship was moving so smoothly, I couldn't feel it. I wore my paisley jacket and black pants to dinner that evening. Sandy wore a beautiful black dress. We went to the Grand Lounge afterwards to watch a production by Broadway Bound. It was Let's get the next page. It was... Uh, it was fair. I need to read up on this. I think uh, there's a lot of things I've forgotten about my trips. Breakfast in the Lido Lounge restaurant. Can't even read my own handwriting. Cereal and scrambled eggs. I drank my Dr. Pepper because I didn't like the orange juice. They had Dr. Peppers on the chip. That morning, invitations were at our door to attend a cocktail reception in the boardroom at 7.30 that evening. Since Sandy was a Cunard Platinum member, now you know what that means, don't you? You've got the silver, the gold, the the platinum, the diamond, the more trips you take, 
you receive a membership. And Sandy had taken quite a few uh, cruises with Cunard. So she was up to the platinum membership that gave us special benefits. I could see why she received an invitation, but this was only my third time on the QE2. The executive chef had spoken to the Vantage Tour, if this is worth reading, tour group on Thursday morning. He explained how food was purchased and prepared for all the passengers. I asked if he was tempted by any of the desserts and he replied, cheese cake. Also my favorite. He said their most popular voyages were during the Christmas season and the passengers requested the traditions traditional Christmas menu. Friday morning, the chief engineer spoke to the group. He had been sailing on the QE2 for 20 years, and most of his crew were from the Philippines. They worked well together, and he never had any problems with them. At the reception, that evening, Sandy and I talked with the chief engineer and he asked our opinion of the morning address. Of course, we told him that everyone found the information very interesting. We talked with another officer, then quickly made our exit. About 50 passengers attended the cocktail party. See, this was special. She got to be invited to the cocktail party because of her status with Cunard. Oh my goodness, I would love to take one more trip. It doesn't have to be a cruise. I don't mind at all flying to England, but I would love to go back one more time. because I know as time goes by, I'm having problems walking already. I can't walk too fast or too far or too long. And I just wanted to be able to go back for a few days and go to special places marked on my calendar, the places I didn't get to see that, of course, I saw uh, the Tower of London. Oh. I saw most of the things that everybody sees when they take a uh, tour, land tour. And funny thing was, when we went to Southbury, England, you remember the cathedral that so, the it's so tall, you can see it from miles away. My sister and I went into Salisbury while others were going through the, the cathedral. And uh, we decided we wanted to eat breakfast. Beautiful little village street. Where do you think we stopped to have breakfast? McDonald's. It was a good breakfast, but why would a person want to go to McDonald's when they're in England? But we did. That was, it was good. We got, we were surrounded by the English people and could listen to them talk and could ask questions. And they were always so willing to uh, give us advice and answer our questions. And it's a beautiful little town. So in way, that's my biggest wish is I wish I could go back to, to England and see the things that I missed. The other place I would like to go back and spend a week 
in Wales. I don't know which of the villages because that's where my dad's ancestors were from, was Wales. And I don't know anything about them. I keep wondering if I was there and had some help, if I might possibly, might possibly find some information that would be helpful to my family history. It would be such a thrill. I don't expect it to happen because I don't have material to work with. Very hard to go back that far. But anyway, I was in Clangochlan. Clangochlan, I get that in your mind. If you're not familiar, it's a long word. Now, if you were looking at that word, you and I, Clan Gochlin starts with a double L. Lan. And the Gochlin is G O L L E N, Golan. So I would pronounce it Lan Golan. It's Clan Gochlin. So if you're ever there, you won't make the same mistake. And that's where you find the shop that had the longest name. I happened to get photographs of the name above the shop door, great big long name. Don't ask me to tell you what it, what it is because I couldn't pronounce it if I knew what it was. Anyway, that's just a little bit of looking back and thinking how nice it was. And I think at time I sat down with this book and two or three other books because I filled this one and I think it's got three trips in it. So I've got one or two other little notebooks. And I like this one because it was from Harrods of London. And you know, the funny thing about this was, let me see what the date is. Okay. This was right after Diana was killed in the car accident. And they had a memorial in the basement of Herod's great big table with his and her pictures, memorial type things lined up on the table. And it was heartbreaking to stand and look at these things and look at their pictures very hard. Um, she was a beautiful, beautiful girl. But anyway, that with so many of the things that you can buy in, in the souvenir shop. If you ever get the chance, now I can't recommend other countries because I haven't been there. Would love to go, but I have been to England. I've been to Scotland and Wales. I can recommend them. And I'm glad that once in my life, I got to do something like that. Everyone should have the chance to go across the ocean and see other countries and see how they live and see the beauty of the villages. It's something you don't forget. And you also put it in your notebook. Someday, someone might want to read this. I'm hoping they do. And I, I'm hoping it impresses them enough 
that they can read through my words and see the things that I saw. I'm going to stop there. Don't think there's anything I need to remind you of. Um, Jan's working today. I didn't think the antique shop would be open on 4th of July, but then again, you stop and think about it. What do people do on 4th of July? They don't just go to the park to a picnic. They go shopping. So she's working today. I haven't talked to her, but I'll find out if she had a good day. And she's going to the lake this weekend. So yeah, I'll hear about that too. Yeah, I get to hear her stories. I don't get to go with her, but I get to hear the stories. So that's okay too. So anyway, keep sending me comments. Keep suggesting people subscribe to my channel. And another thing, I want you to tell your friends and your family about Billy Jean's uh, YouTube channel. He is a very good cook. I know he is. He studied it. He was in France learning to be a chef. I teased him a little bit about that. But when you watch him work in his kitchen, you know that you need to listen closely because what he says is something you should follow. Uh, I know that any anything I want to know about cooking, I can ask him. And he will tell me. He will tell me what to do. So you keep watching his show. And I think you're going to learn a lot from him. And he needs to build up his subscription list. Tell your friends to subscribe to Bill. Just me, Billie Jean. They won't be sorry. I watch him too. So, that's all for today. I think I'm going to go in and fix me some buttered pecan ice cream. And I'm going to put some caramel sauce on it. I don't have to tell my doctor that because I'm going to do it anyway. Thank you for watching me and I'll be waiting to hear from you.